I'm going to speak to us this morning on what I call how to effectively work with God. How you can effectively work with God. I mean, work with Him. Praise the Lord. Majority of us in the body of Christ uh, thought that we are working with God and God is working with us. But the truth of the matter is that many of us lack the technical know-how on how to get God, God's presence, and how to get God to accept our proposals to work with him. Amen. Many of us in the body of Christ uh, desires this dearly from our heart. But the problem is that we don't know how to cultivate it. So this morning uh, I want to touch on that and if there is any appropriate day to do this, it's the day. Because we're going to cement it with holy communion we're going to seal whatever the Lord is going to minister to us today with the Holy Communion to help us advance in our spiritual life. Spiritual work with God is not an easy one. The enemy of your soul will attack it. Because the moment you are in a good rapport with the almighty God that the enemy of your soul will lose his grip in your life. So he know it. He fight harder to keep you at distance with the almighty God. But by the mercy of God this morning we are going to look into a certain guidelines that the Lord brought to my heart to share with us. To effectively work with God, you need to first of all understand his person. And you also need to locate where he is. If you want to work with me, you need to understand exactly who am I. Then you need to understand where to find me. You cannot assume to be working with, to work with me why you don't even know where I am. Praise the Lord. Or actually understand exactly the things I, I love or the things I want you to do so that I can give you that audience you're looking for. Now we're going to start by finding out who is God and where is he to be found. Shocking. Who is the almighty God that we call which means we're trying to find out his person. And now where can we locate him? The answer is simple in the word of God. Go with me to the book of John chapter number 4 verse 24. In the book of John chapter number 4 verse 24 the scripture declares the spirit the, the scripture declares that God is first spirit. And those who choose to walk with him or those who choose to worship him must go after him in spirit and how? In truth. You see, now we'll be able to understand that the person of God is a spirit. I'll be able to understand that the location that God is in the spirit. Praise the Lord. Which means hanging around God in the flesh is a loose game. You cannot enjoy a close work with the Almighty God while living in the flesh. The flesh will get you to be more conscious on your person than you are on the person of God. King David when the ark was returned back to Israel, King David following the ark danced like a little child. 
To the point where his wife got upset that he's supposed to know himself. He's supposed to act dignified as a king. But he's dancing like a little boy. You know why it was like that? Because King David recognized that it's not about him. So he knew exactly who he is and whom he calls. So he losing up himself. And he was dancing and turning around with his rope. We we're drawing all kind of dust. I ain't care. Why? He recognized where who God is and where God can be found in the spirit realm. So which means that he he opened his spirit and he shunned his flesh. He was no more interested in what people are saying and who is, or who is looking at him or who is not looking at him. He's no more interested with those things. All he's interested in is to assess the almighty God. For God to be pleased with him. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter number 1 verse 29, the Bible declares that no flesh shall glory in the presence of God. No flesh shall glory in the presence of the Most High. Praise the Lord. You will always find it very difficult to experience God's presence in your life if you are a companion of the flesh it will be difficult for you to assess it will be difficult for you to experience the personality the person of God in your life if you are a companion of the flesh you know why because the flesh will silence faith of which without you cannot assess God. The flesh will show you what you want to see now. But not what really is. Because what it is, is in the spirit realm. What you are seeing right now is temporal. That your consciousness will, will wash away. But the spirit side of you lives for eternity. Praise the Lord. The flesh will make you see that problem that has been plaguing you from last week. And keep presenting it before your front. Keep presenting it before your view. So that you will dwell on them instead of uh, dwelling in the spirit where God that created all things dwell. So the God who will give you the answers you need. The flesh will make you avoid looking in that direction. But to remain with the physical. And on that note, you work harder. Praise the Lord. There are many things that we do in the house of God that is causing us plenty problems and yet we don't really know that those things can become a hindrance. Or that those things are the things that are constituting the hindrance we're suffering. In the absence of faith, in the absent, abs, absent of faith, faith in the living word of God who remains Jesus Christ, you cannot, he can never by any means, by any chance, access the Almighty God. What did I say? I say, in the absence of faith, in the living word of God. The living word of God is Jesus Christ. In absence of faith in him, you cannot assess the Father, the God Almighty, the creator of the ends of the earth. You cannot assess him. So which means that faith is the ultimate thing you need to really work with God effectively. Because faith will, will show you, faith will not show you the physical, but it will show you the invincible. Praise the Lord. What did I say? In absence of faith, 
in the living word of God who remains Jesus Christ there is no way you can come close to God the Father which means that the flesh is the first impediment to building a solid relationship with God what do I mean by that the flesh because the faith without 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 faith I mean with flesh working in your life you will not have faith and if that faith is not there you cannot assess God which means that the problem to, that will keep you far from working in close proximity, uh, proximity with God is flesh and you have to work to subdue that flesh if you really want to assess God that's what I'm trying to illustrate to you if you are not willing to put your flesh under subjection you will not make it close to the almighty God if you're not willing to put your flesh under subjection the flesh that will give you that incentive to look on what is now the flesh that will cause you to begin to think of things that are physical not things that are eternal that flesh is the most impediment to your close work with the almighty God so if you are not willing to put it under subjection you will never make it close to God so if that's the case what are we going to do to get the flesh out of the way so that we can have that close work with God. Close work with God. What are we going to do? The book of Galatians chapter number 5 verse 16. You need to know what to do. Because if I tell you that the flesh is the problem so how do I deal with this flesh? I think I'm trying but it's not working. Working in my own estimation. No, there is something that you need to do. What he says is that you should learn to walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the laws of the flesh. If the flesh is the problem, you should learn to walk in the spirit. How do you walk in the spirit? By silencing your physical desires and tune into spiritual things. By having yourself attached to spiritual things than you are attached to the fleshly things. That's what I'm trying to say. You have to begin to do what? You have to begin to grab the spiritual more than the fleshly. It's a hard job to many of us. But life is located there. Praise the Lord. You must learn to bring your flesh, which I mean, I mean your body, because the flesh and the body are the same. You must learn to bring them under subjection by saying no to some of your cravings, some of those your fleshly crave, cravings, those things that get you. Praise the Lord. You must learn to do what Apostle Paul said or what Apostle Paul did in the book of 1 Corinthians 9 27. What did he do? But I discipline my body and bring it into subjection. Why? Least when I have preached to others, I myself should become disqualified. So you must learn to do what? Bring your flesh under subjection. Bring your flesh under subjection. Sometimes, like I said, it looked off. Because your flesh always seeks for easy way out. That's why it's difficult for some people to fast. That's why it's difficult for some people to pray. That's why it's tough for some people to hang around here. Because in their flesh, they just want the easy way out. You tell me how it will happen. Forget about me being involved. Forgetting that if you're not involved, you will not be out. Because you're a free moral being. I am here to guide you. But I'm not here to live your life for you. When we finish service today, you head down to your house. I don't know what you're doing there. 
I'm only aware of what I'm doing here right now with you. So you see, but what I'm doing here is to help you to see the areas you're not looking at so that when you go home, you don't need me presence to understand because the word of God is enough to minister to you, to show you that pastor show me this in the scripture, which means if I go that way, it will become an impediment in my life. So which means I don't need even nobody to monitor me. I am not going that way. That's how it work. Praise the Lord. You must learn to live your life in line with his divine order. And that is the only way you can have a close walk with him. He is a spirit. And if you want to worship him, what did he say we should do? You should worship him in spirit and in truth. Which means that whether I look at you or whether I set camera in your house to monitor you or not, you still be who you are. What you are in, 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 in the dark is what you are in the open. That's what I'm talking about. Praise the Lord. Must learn to bring your flesh under subjection. Otherwise, it will be difficult for you to assess or to enjoy close work with him. These are the things that our Petrarchs did that gave them the tremendous victories that they enjoy. Who do I mean? You see, Apostle Paul said, I bring my body under subjection. He is one of our Petrarch. He lived his life throughout uh, being conscious of these things I'm saying. That's why he did not, he died a happy man. And we are still enjoying what God used him to do. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, we had what I call a show of shame. A show of shame. In our godly nation. Under the watch of our godly big shops. Show of shame. Matured men and women dancing naked or half naked on the street. In godly nation. Liquor was just like drinking water. They're drinking, they're dropping their bottles on the road. They are hanging out like, I mean, you see the, 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 the things that will block your eyes. Trying to come into the church, I couldn't come. I had to park my car way up and carry my heavy bag to get to church. Why? Because there are people who are showing off their shamefulness on the street. What are we teaching the little ones? Give me the benefit of that show of shame yesterday. What is the benefit? That people gratify their flesh, come out in the open to show the world their nakedness and their smelly body dancing on the street. And yet today, some of them will come and stand in the choir to sing. To who? To who? Who are you singing to? This is the problem we have. Some people who saw some of them yesterday naked on the street will come in church and sit there and see the person singing, the Lord is good. And you think he'll come back tomorrow? what I'm talking about. The moment you put your flesh in the front line, forget God. You can never walk close to him. You can claim it. You can make it a show like you did yesterday before people you can deceive but really inside the Lord knew you. Thank God nobody from here. I didn't even think twice whether I would see anybody from here. And I wasn't even there to look who is there because my eyes shall not behold iniquity. The little one I see trying to pass by, I had to pray and repent for allowing my eyes to even view them. But I have to come to church any which way. 
is a show of shame. A show of shame. Praise the Lord. The Lord told us, believers, what we ought to do in regards to how we appear publicly, our dressing, our way of life, supposed to be different from the world system if we are actually aiming to win them to Christ. There is no reason why you should be showing your body to the public. It is a sin before God because in your mind you already know what you're trying to do. I don't need to tell you what you're trying to do. You're trying to get attention. You're trying to seduce people. And the queen of the ghosts and her agents are using you to do the job. So you are like a puppet in the hand of the tax master. How can you walk close with God like that? God we serve is a spirit. And those who worship him must do what? Worship him in spirit and in truth. Do God tell you to dance naked on the street? You answer. So if he didn't tell you, that means you are listening to somebody else, not him. Praise the Lord. There are six vital things, vital ways to create a long lasting work with God. These six vital ways are what our Petrarchs did that gave them the victory that they have in their time and the same victory we're enjoying today. What are these people that did this? I'm talking about Petrarch like Enoch. The Bible talks about Enoch in the book of Genesis chapter number 5 verse 22b. The Lord said that Enoch worked with God 300 years and begot sons and daughters. He worked with God 300 years. It's in your Bible. He worked with God. Someone working with God must be in close proximity with God. Not saying it by saying sake, but far from what it is. We are talking about a person like Noah. The Bible says that Noah was a just man in the book of Genesis chapter number 6, 9b. The Bible says that Noah was a just man, perfect in his generation. And he went ahead to say he walked with God. He walked with God. We even have a better opportunity, a better covenant today because of the accomplishment of Jesus Christ, which means that we are the one who's supposed to be working with the master perfectly. These people I'm talking about, in their time, they're still waiting for the appearance of the Messiah. Now the Messiah has come in and gave us a total victory. But yet we're struggling to work with him. People who only have a shadow learn and walk with him and he walked with them. But we will have the substance itself at our possession are struggling to walk with him. You know why? Flesh. Praise the Lord. Take a look at someone like Abraham. Abraham who ended up becoming Abraham. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter number 17, 1. It says when Abraham was 99 years old. So you can't come with age around me here. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am God. I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. And if we know, if we check, he walked with God. Indeed, blameless. These are people who only have shadow. These are those who only have the shadow of the blessing. The shadow of the covenant. Not like us who have the full detail, the substance in the person of Jesus Christ that gave us the, uh, gave us, let me say, 
tremendous access than these ones I just mentioned. And we are struggling to walk with God. Why? Flesh. The enemy knows this very well and he is taking his pound of flesh as he has vowed to do. But the, the bottom line is that you can say no. This particular tent cannot be inhabited by you. And if you say that, the enemy will not force himself into you. I've told you many times. It's you to decide within yourself to say, you see this particular tent? Iniquity will not dwell here while I'm on earth here. It's your choice. You can say it to yourself and you maintain it. Will it be rough sometimes? Yes, it will. Oh yeah, you live in, in their terrain. They will keep throwing their their arrows to see how they can corner you out. But you have to make a decision because you're not here forever. You're not here forever. Get it straight in your head. All they're trying to do is to use you as a puppet to do their to do their work and end up stealing your soul to eternal dom uh, domination. That's what they're looking for. So you gotta say no. Praise the Lord. So all these men I called right now, all of them worked with God perfectly and God was pleased with them. All of them. God was pleased with them. And they had a solid result that we're enjoying today. What can we say about you when it's all been said and done? Tell me one. Because we need to say something about you. If we're still here. If we're not here, those who will be here when it's all been said and done. They should say something positive about you. This is a personal responsibility that is laid on your hands. I repeat. Will it be easy? No, because you live in the terrain where the good, the ugly, and the bad are around. And most of the times they are not far from your proximity. They are close. But even in the midst of it, you still have what it takes to say. You see this one? I am for Christ and Christ alone. Iniquity shall not dwell in this tent. Praise the Lord. Imagine you Let's assume, imagine you, God forbid, have your son or your daughter dancing naked on the street yesterday. How will you feel? And you're here working for God. The only way that will happen is if you have never known the seed of life and sow it into them while you're raising them. That's the only way to happen. But if they ever have this particular knowledge, they will never go out there to dance naked on the street. I guarantee you that. You don't even need to fight that hard. Because the spirit of the Lord will rise up and sensitize them. I was ashamed even though he have nothing to do with me. But I was ashamed yesterday to even come close. And they saw me. Some of them saw me when I was coming. They saw me wearing pastor collar. Passing. So all of them were. You can see evil know when he when they are doing evil so some of them are just ashamed see me just see me walk with my bag in my back just looking for a way to scare through their shameful act I can see in their face and I like it that way at least that shows them that the, 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 the presence of God the, 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 the presence of God is judging them right right there because you know when you're doing right you know when you're doing wrong you know it's just that the human mind has decided to yield to the flesh rather than the spirit that's why we stay struggling with it if we can just listen to that tiny winning voice of the spirit of God telling us that's not the right way. Don't go there. If we can listen to it, we won't be struggling in our, in our work with God. We won't be struggling. It's just that we boldly say, no, this is what I want to do. Now I'm telling me, dancing naked, what do you achieve? Nothing. Inside of God, nothing. But inside of Satan, you have created another seed inside someone's heart that they will live there last night 
and end up either in club or end up somewhere doing foolishness. To your own, uh, 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 to your own, um, um, uh, uh, to your own ego. You want to show off who you are. These men I call, they worked with God perfectly. And God was pleased with them. So what are the things they did? How do they make it? Because you see, when we learn how they made it, we'll be able to apply it in our own life so that we can, work, try, we can position ourselves to enjoy that same close work they had with God. Number one thing that they did, they trusted God with all their heart without wavering. They trusted the Almighty God with all their heart without wavering. They did not waver. They did not try to find another way to handle things. No, they depend on God and they work with God. Praise the Lord. So I want you to understand that trust, to trust God is to believe and reverence Him with all your heart at all times. To trust God, when I say they trust their God, they believe God and they reverence God in everything they do. So which means that if you are claiming that you trust God, you have to believe God and reverence Him, reverence Him in everything you do. Let it be known that anything you do, when people look at it, they can see God in it. They can see the sign of God in it. Let nothing be, be, be seen around you that have a show of shame in it. You get what I'm trying to say? When people come around that thing you did, they will see that you have some understanding of God's presence in your life. They have to see it that way. Praise the Lord. If you learn, if you understand what I just said right now, it will secure you. That thing will secure you God's protection, God's provision, and God's guidance. It will secure for you God's protection, God's provision, and God's guidance. What do I mean by that? Protection that when the enemy shoot arrow your direction, it ain't gonna stick. Provision that whenever it look like Everything has jungled up in nowhere out. God will make a way for you. Guidance, God will lead you. You will not dash your feet to the stone. You will not go in the wrong places. You will not join the wrong uh, 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 crowd. You will not act. You will not join the wrong set of people. God will always sensitize you to say, Back off. It's one of them. Back off. They are after your soul. God will show you that sign because he will guide you. How do I know? The God that I serve is the God that guides, that directs the full step of who? The righteous. Praise the Lord. Pastor Grace just gave you a testimony of what happened. I went before I took, before I I, 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 I took the assignment, God, in, uh, God, God, God prepared me from from my mother's womb. Before I took it, everything was going haywire. Everything was jungling up in my life. Nothing is adding up. I went to that same American embassy three times, and I was bounced. Big time. And there is no no flaw, no mistakes. Actually, one time I went there, a friend has to, I had about $4,000 in my account. A friend had to send $10,000 into my account just to make my account bounce. Bounce, I mean, look rich. And I printed a statement. He was looking, oh boy, everything was, I told them in the bank to stamp it and they make a note also. So they did. Over Atlantis, I got all my pay sleep. They are like this. All the pay slips, the one I don't collect, I pack them. I see if they want to check, they can see that there are a bunch of money I already have. But they even check the statement of account I gave to her. And it wasn't her statement of account, you know. Listen, 
I told you all this year, I said, where others go and fail, he will walk in there and people will be wondering. It still stands, but you have to believe it. I look at this man, I wanted to argue. I have everything. Letter from Atlantis. Stating my, my expertise. How good I am in my job. And the intended promotion to come. Everything is there. So that in case if they think I'm trying to run away. They should know that this man is part. I didn't go war permit. I went with permanent resident. I, do it here. I live here. But I was still bounced. They didn't see her work permit. They didn't see nothing. I have all her documents right now. All the documents she went there with. What I'm trying to say. There is a way this God works. You will go to that doctor. They will bring all their long results. But you go back. And they will tell you. We can't find what we thought was there before. Where did he go? When you are working with God, he will always go ahead of you and make every crooked place straight. I didn't even, I didn't even crack my head. I brought all her documents. I table it in my bed and I lay and I say, Lord, you know, by standard, we have no qualification for this. But Lord, send your angels to go with her. That's all I know. Ain't nothing else I can do. I don't do what I could do. I took it, I came out and I said to her, take your document, the Lord will go with you. And I went, I parked at uh, McDonald's. Just relax there. I wasn't feeling anything strange. I wasn't having no like, what would happen, what would happen, what wouldn't happen. That's why I say, when you hand it over to him, give yourself peace. You know the problem most of us do have? You don't pray. You don't give it to God. But you're still shivering like jellyfish. How will you get the answer? You remember the scripture that said, let that no man think that he will get anything from the Lord. Why? Because he's unsuitable. You're not steady. First time, no visa, whatever, none. No visa. She has never been to, she almost missed even her step trying to find where I say, go in. That's the road there. Go in that way. Because she never been there. Praise the Lord. I'm only saying, I, I, when, 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 I, when I came one time ago and I was telling you what they did about the money they said I owe them, I said to you, the same God who began, and the same thing will happen in this case now. Anyone who is going to that American embassy again for any visa will never be denied. I say you will never be denied. Take this prophecy today and you will testify. You will never be denied. America is so funny that if you want to go anywhere, you don't pass through them, you pay arm and leg for ticket. But if you pass through them, you get a jeep. So you gotta go through them. Praise the Lord. Trust. To trust God, you must believe Him. You must reverence Him. With all your heart, at all times, not sometimes. Don't make it sometimes. Because sometimes will not work. It's all times. Praise the Lord. Now take a look at the book of Psalm. The book of Psalms 125 verse 1 and 2. What did he say? Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion. Which cannot be what? Moved. But abides forever. As the mountain surrounds Jerusalem. So the Lord surrounds his people. From this time forth and forever. He will always be with you. But you have to trust him. I told you that our patriarchs, one of the, the things that made it easy for them to enjoy the, 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 the victory they enjoyed is because they trusted God in our day today. We claim that we are coming to church. We claim that we are praying to God. But we are more scared than the most scary people, the person out there. We don't present it to God. We 
don't present it to God. Why are we still afraid whether it will happen? I will show you scripture. Because those are the things that are robbing you. I have learned to live my life. This is it. That's how I learned to live my life. When I stand before God, praise the Lord. Look at the book of Proverbs, chapter number 3, verse 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Why? In all, why is it important? Because in all your ways, if you acknowledge him, he will direct your path. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Look at the verse 7. He said, do not be wise in your own eye. You too smart. Sharp. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and do what? Take your hands off the cookie jar. That's all you need. That's all you need. And with this, you will enjoy your fellowship with the Almighty God. You will enjoy your, 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 your union in this kingdom of God. Because the truth of the matter is that every word of God in the scripture will begin to come through in your life. The race is not for the swift, nor the battle for the strong, nor bread for men of skills. But the time and the chance happens to them all. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am here to get you to see this this morning. Because we need to learn to work with God. If we're working with God, we will work lesser. Because he run things. Some of us trust our bosses more than we trust God. Some of us, our doctors, more than we trust God. And some of us, our friends, more than we trust God. The friends who will eventually disappoint you and keep you in the middle of nowhere, you trust them more than God. That's why when they hit you, I have seen people who say they are about to kill themselves. Why? Because the person they trust disappoint them. I turn around and say to one, one, one woman who went to kill herself because her husband left her. I say, listen, you are on your way to another, the expressway, eh? there was no traffic. And that expressway will lead you straight to hell if you do what you want to do. Because she want to kill herself. Her husband left her and married another woman. So for that, she, she have no reason to live again. Eh? You have no reason to live again. That means all along when you're going to church, your husband is the God. Indirectly, the man is the God. Not God. Not the Almighty God. The man is the God you are worshiping. So now the God that you're worshiping has left you. So that which means that there's no reason to live again. So you want to die. How many times have the scripture said we should not trust in the arm of the flesh? And they made it clear to us that they will fail us. But majority of us trust. Now you are sick. I am not telling you don't go to doctor. But how have you ever remembered to even call on the Jehovah known as Jehovah Rapha? Have you ever tried to call him sincerely? The same way you believe that your doctor. Have you ever tried to call on him and table this particular case before him? Have you ever? No. It's all that that they said in that their medical report that is more important to you. You want to go to the detail to buy every drug and borrow money to buy them. But all God needs is for you to come clean before him and begin to call on his name in that situation. Yet you can do it. Because you don't believe it will work. Praise the Lord. That's the problem most of us have. Take a look at the book of Proverbs chapter number 29 verse 25. What did he say? The fear of man brings a snake. But whoever trusts in the Lord shall do what? Now I want you to see it. The fear of man brings a snake. Whoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved. It shall be saved. Proverbs chapter number 
29 verse 25 he said fear of man will bring his name definitely but whosoever trusts in the Lord shall be saved that is the word of God Proverbs chapter number 28 verse 25 through 26 what did he say again he said he who is of a proud heart stirs up strife but he who trusts in the Lord will be will be what will prosper will be prospered look at verse 26 he say he will he who trusts in the law in his own heart is a fool but whoever work wisely will be what be delivered you must understand these things these things are true word of god that cannot be changed no power can change it no power can change it look at the next one the book of uh, psalms 27 37 verse 3 through 6 what did he say trust in the lord and do good look at the word trust in the lord and do good dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness delight yourself also in the lord and he shall do what he shall give you the desires of your heart Delight yourself in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust also in him. Again he said, and he shall bring it to pass. Bring what to pass? The same thing you want to see to happen, that you want to see happen in your life for good, God will bring it to pass. But look at, he said, commit your way to the Lord. Look at, trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. Look at verse 6. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noon day. That's the God I know. Number 2, and I will close there. Number 2 thing they did that put them in the pinnacle of power and the way they were today, where they, they was that we are still enjoying what they did the number two things they did is that they maintained and enjoyed a close relationship with God through prayers they maintained this particular work with God the closeness they enjoyed with God through prayers against all odds there are things that came up that could have deterred them from still remaining you know connected to God through prayers. There are many things that came up that could have deterred them, but they did not bow to it. They maintained their speed in regards to prayers. The Bible says that throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, when he's, when he, when he's working a little while, you see him depart a place. The Bible says, and he went to a quiet place and he prayed. He went to a quiet place and he prayed. What else do you need? The master has shown you how to work how to make things happen on this earth but some of us still in one follow that guidelines why it's too hard let me remind you this and i've been saying it you see this your tongue this your tongue carry tremendous power there is nothing you cannot do with this your tongue this your tongue can create create something this your tongue can destroy something this your tongue can uplift you this your tongue can bring you down the same tongue if you learn to say no to Satan sincerely from your heart he has no choice but to listen to that if you learn to say yes to what God has destined for you the enemy has no choice but to release them why? because there is power in your tongue without your tongue you will be justified and by that same word that comes from that your tongue you can be condemned how if you are saying the wrong thing if you're always applying wrong statements in your life it will come through praise the lord there's nothing impossible if you know how to use your word carefully how to use that your tongue carefully nothing is impossible praise the lord and that can never happen outside prayers if you're not a prayerful person the enemy will be giving you negative statements to make and once you're making those negative statements he'll be dwelling on them and he'll be using them against you you see when we pray here we say i bind you Satan and all that listen to me if you know how powerful that is 
but it has to come from your innermost being. Don't make it, don't take it for granted. Don't look at it like a uh, pastor says, I should say, no, 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 no. I'm only guiding you. I'm only leading you. So you need to believe it as you say it. That's all you need. And it will work for you. Prayer, listen to this. Prayer prayed from the heart in the name of Jesus is the most effective means of staying in close relationship with the Almighty God. Prayer prayed in the prayed in the name of Jesus. Prayer prayed in the name of Jesus from your heart. Prayer you pray from your heart in the name of Jesus is the most effective means of staying close in close relationship with God. These things are life. You have to pray from the depth of your heart and it has to be in the name of Jesus. You know why I say in the name of Jesus? Because plenty of people pray. I know a man that don't believe in Jesus but he prayed and only what he called is God. He doesn't call no name Jesus. And I remember the Bible says that no one can assess the, the almighty God except he go through the name of Jesus. So he, he, Muslims say they pray but they don't, they, they don't agree with the name Jesus but they pray. Guess what? More than you. They pray five times every day. And you cannot cause, get them to live one time of that prayer. You can't. No matter what they are doing, they will find that time, 30 minutes, hitting their head down. Some of us, just to walk around here and pray these fire prayers, you're tired. But these people will bend down. Watch Google how Muslims play. They will bend down and hit their head on the ground like this. They will be doing it. They will stand up. Old, young. They will be doing that five times a day. And they have, it has been accustomed to them that they no longer even feel anything like it's hard. But they don't call the name Jesus. So that's where the problem is. Only what we do here, run around and just pray. A few minutes, you're back. You want to sit down. Believers are the most true, lazy people. We need to work off this. You know, no person in the front line acts the way we act. Somebody in the front line must be agile, must be active, must be ready for incoming bullets and the one responsible for the one they have to be sending because as you're sending, they are firing back to you too. Oh, so you don't know. War is you hit me, I hit you. That is what. But some of us, we are hitting and believe that they won't hit us back. No, they will hit you back. But the question is, will he enter? He will not enter. If you are standing strong in your own position, because greater is he that is within your side than he that is with them. Praise the Lord. So prayer prayed from the heart in the name of Jesus is the most effective means of staying in close relationship with the Lord. A prayerful man or woman will always enjoy God's presence, provision and protection in, at all times in their life. A prayerful man or woman will always enjoy God's presence, God's provision and God's protection at all times in their life. So that's why you need to really work your own salvation to the point where you become a prayerful Christian. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Look at this particular word in the book of Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 through 13. I read quickly. For I know the thought I think towards you. How many times have I said this scripture here? I know the thought I think towards you. Says the Lord of hosts. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. Look at verse 12. Then you will call on me and go and do what? Pray to me. You will call on me and go and pray to me. Look at the next one. And I will listen to you 
and you will seek me and find me but look at the next when you search for me with all your heart it has to be something that comes from the depth of your heart child of God listen to me prayer is not about how long but how well and the wellness of your prayers for it to be effective it has to be coming from your innermost being and you should not allow distraction when you are communicating the children can be kept one place why are you doing this because the enemy can use every means to, de 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 to, to bring the, uh, uh, distract you in that solo moment that you are consulting the God that will protect you and protect them because as long as the, 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 the law of life is concerned they are not yet mature to understand the, the nature of what you're doing so you have to be the one to make them understand listen when mama is praying you don't come in there to make noise you have to clarify this praise the Lord praise the Lord so these are the things you have to know in your heart because at that moment is between you and the creator of the ends of the earth and you cannot make light of it if someone is talking to you if you are with your boss talking with your boss and somebody coming to distract do your boss always say it's okay for them to distract that's why they lock the door when meeting is going on they lock the door nobody comes in but in our case, it's not like that. You can be praying and you are thinking of the thing you put in the fire. A prayerful Christian will always enjoy the presence, the provision and protection of the Almighty God at all times. So the Bible says that we should learn to pray and when we're doing it, we have to do it with all our hearts. No matter the situation you are going through right now, child of God, no matter the situation that is present, that you, you, you are encountering presently right now, if you remain connected to Jesus Christ through prayers, he will surely see you through. I don't care how many, how many those problems are. No matter the circumstances that is surrounding you right now, if you still maintain your relationship with the Lord Jesus through prayers, as you keep pushing forward, he will surely see you through. It might look like nothing is working now, but don't worry about it. Sometimes they are working in the realm because the realm has to be taken care of first before these things will start manifesting physically. Praise the Lord. You're praying, believing God for your healing. Please, that you see that pain still occurring, don't buy to it. Just still look at it and still have your faith locked up on the God who is called Jehovah Rapha, the healer. Just lock your faith on him and watch and see. Praise the Lord. Take a look at the book of James. In James, in James chapter number 5 verse 13 through 17, the Lord said this. He said, in, is anyone among you suffering? It's a question. Is anyone among you suffering? Look at what he said you should do. Let him pray. But at that moment in our life is when we, 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 we prayer is the last thing on our mind. We want our uncle to come quick and solve it we need to borrow to get it done is anyone suffering among you what did he say let him pray is anyone cheerful look at what he said you should do let him sing psalms you see the difference you're suffering pray you're, you, 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 you're happy he says, sing psalms, praises to the Lord Almighty. Praise the Lord. Is anyone among you sick? Look at what he said. Let him call for the elders of the church and let them do what? Pray. I want you to check how many pray, pray, pray you see in this scripture. Let, him, let them pray over him. Anoint him with oil in the name of who? of the Lord, you know, Jesus Christ. Now look at verse 15, he said, and the prayer of faith, you see when I say have to do from the depth of your heart, 
The prayer of faith will save the sick. We save the sick. We save the sick. Which means you are asking God for your healing. You have to have faith that God is able to heal you. You have to attach every word that you're saying to him as Jehovah, the, uh, Jehovah Rapha, the healer. You have to believe him. Praise the Lord. Take a look at it. He said, if anyone, look at, look at this. Let him pray. He said, the prayer of the of faith will save the sick. And the Lord will do what? Will raise him up. And if he committed sin, look at this now. If he committed sin, he will be forgiven. Now he said in verse 16, he said, confess your trespasses to one another. And do what? Pray again. For one another. Pray for one another. How many prayers you see there? He said, pray for one another that you may be healed. Look at the next one. The effectual fervent pray again. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Now he reminded us that Elijah was a man with a natural light, a nature like ours. And he prayed earnestly that it will not rain. And it did not rain on the land for three years and six months. Now verse 18. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And the earth produced its fruit. Look at. You can use prayer to lock the enemy out of your life. You can use prayer to draw the attention of God in your life. That's what he's trying to say. Because Elijah had to use prayer to back up his claim. And the heaven was shut. And when he decided, he asked the God who created the heaven and earth to release the rain. So which means he used prayer to lock up and used prayer to open the door. That is what we are told to do. Not complain. I try my best to get you to understand these things. It's not hard. These things are not hard. It's just for you to be willing. Take away the flesh out of the way. Anchor yourself on the spirit. If you anchor yourself on the spirit and start following the ways, the things that the Lord asks you to do. You see how he say, if anyone's suffering, let him pray. Let it not be the time for you to begin to lament, to begin to look at, uh, you see this one in praying and he's, he's prospering. And me and I is praying, ain't nothing working. Listen to me. How many times did I tell you about the chicken in the yard and chicken in the cage? How many times did I tell you that? Praise the Lord. Look at this. For your prayers to become effective and able to get the attention of the Almighty God, you must pray in accordance to His will. His will. His will. Majority of us asking things that God even into. You're asking certain things that God does not endorse. But you're still forcing it to happen. It will not happen. I remember a woman that told me that she's praying to get another man's husband waiting for the uh, for, 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 for the wife of the man to die so that she can marry the man and you're praying I say you're praying he say, I say we will be so long praying I ask I say is the woman dead now she say, I say is she sick he say no I say okay more, more 50 years remains so you stay there and wait for some of us we praying for things that God can never answer and we are attaching it like God you need to answer this is error. Praise the Lord. You're praying to take what belongs to somebody's uh, somebody. You know that's his own. But you're praying for God to kill them so that you can take them. God will not kill them. You are in error. Okay, look at the book of First John. The book of 1 John, chapter number 5, verse 15, uh, 14 through 15. He declares, he said, now this is the confidence that we, we do what? That we have. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will. Look at that. His will. He's, he hears us. God will only hear you when you are asking for something in his will. 
Okay, let me bring it home. You are working. And you know that from there you are taking care of your home. God ain't going to like you to starve. If something is trying to stop that job or trying to attack that job, you can take it to the Lord and submit it to him. He will, make a, he will go ahead of you and clear the way for you. If, it has, if, it, if someone has to be removed for your sake, it will be done. So in that, you're not in error. You are trying to make sure that you have, and most especially you're a tighter. You are doing what you're supposed to do in the house of, who is the devil? The enemy can rise, but if you keep quiet, they will succeed. But if you know you're right, you, you can get over. Praise the Lord. I mean, if you, you can say to the Lord, Father, whatever, whoever, however, whoever is conspiring against me in this job, my Lord, remove them. You are right. Yes. Because they are digging a pit that you should lose the job. So they should lose first. It's as simple as that. And in that kind of prayer, God will answer. I prayed it, he answered. As long as you have no skeleton in your cupboard, you're not looking for their problem and they're looking for your own, come on. You serve a God that is known as a man of war. He said, I will fight for you. If there is no battle, how will he say, I will fight for you? He said, I will fight for you and you shall hold your peace, which means there is war. And he said, he will be the one who will fight the war and you have your peace. Why? Because you're his own. Praise the Lord. Take a look at the book of, look, if your prayers are filled with anxiety, I want you to take note of this. If your prayers are filled with anxiety and full of doubt, it might suffer death on arrival. If your prayers are filled with what? Anxiety and full of doubt, it will suffer death on arrival. Because God will not hear you. The book of Mark, chapter number 11, verse 24. What did he say? Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. It must not have, you must not have anxiety in your mind when you're asking God for anything. Please listen to me. I want you to understand what I'm trying to say. Don't allow that anxiety. I know the pain is there. You're praying for that particular you are healing and you're still feeling the pain. Forget about that. As long as you can still talk, keep on asking God for your healing. And believe that he can heal you. So forget about what the enemy is doing. The pain is intensifying because the enemy knows that if you can summon courage and believe God for your healing, he will lose. So he will try to make you divert your attention and focus your attention on the pain. So that when you're asking God for healing, you are one way saying, God, I need healing. But the other way, you're remembering you need to take the whole drugs now to see if the pain will go down. So you have a problem there. Praise the Lord. Deal with God first. And leave the rest. I didn't say don't take your drugs. But deal with God first because the healing comes from him. The drugs most of the time is temporary. They quench the pain for a, a, a while but they're coming back. And there is what is called side effect which you end up going through. Which you're going to suffer along the way. Praise the Lord. But when God heals you every side effect is erased. You have to do it from your the depth of your heart and you have to believe God. Take a look at the book of Philippians. Philippians 4 chapter 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all. To all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious. Verse 6. Be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to God. Look at that. Be anxious for nothing but with prayer and thanksgiving with, with, with prayer and supplication with thanksgiving that means uh, instead of you to concentrate on the pain no concentrate on 
the almighty God, as you say those words, begin to imagine his goodness, begin to imagine his kindness, begin to thank him for at least keeping you alive as, as of that moment that you can be able to open your mouth to pray. It's a great big favor that you enjoy. So accept it, thank him for it, be anxious for nothing, but with prayer, with supplication and thanksgiving, then make those your requests known to him. Look at the next verse. And the peace when this is done properly, the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Why is it surpassing all understanding? Because in the recess of it, the pain is there. In the recess of it, the money is not yet there. You're supposed to be paying that bill tomorrow and you are today broke like broke and you don't know how to do it but you're still believing God for provision. Ah! So indeed the pain is there. The, the, the situation is there but you believe that God who created all things uh, can cause things to come from the unseen between now and tomorrow and it might be possible that you might even come to that particular person you are afraid will chop off your head they will tell you listen we decided to really knock off this meal you already at night you, was, you have sleepless night throughout the night you even in sleep so you need to learn how to deal with God as a believer Our, see understand that in this kingdom you are powerful but you have a contender and the contender will always try to attack but you have to believe in the one who you call and stand your ground on his side leave the rest that's why Jesus said in this world you face tribulation but be of good cheer for I have overcome even though the situation is rough you still have to believe God and stay with him. Praise the Lord. There are, there are no questions you have. All of those questions you have in your mind right now that Jesus doesn't have answers to. But you have to learn to call on him sincerely from the depth of your heart. If you need answers to them. Take a look at what he said in the book of Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3. He said, call, on, call on to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things which you do not know. Those hidden questions that is bothering your mind, he will show it to you as you keep asking. Pastor, how is he going to show it to me? He can come through dreams. He can come through open visions and you will see them. There is nothing that happens in my life that I didn't see ahead of time. What you see going on in this church now, I saw it already. Before now. And what will happen after this, I already saw it. Everything is a phase. Timing. That's why you see me, I'm bubbling. Because it's a privilege to see. That's what I'm trying to pray for God to do for you all here. Because if you can have a peep, you will give yourself peace. The problem that a lot of people have is they don't know what nest. And once you don't know what nest and you don't want to depend on the one who knows what nest, you will be confused. If you depend on the one who knows what nest, he will pilot the boat. And along the way, by his mercy, he can reveal it to you and you will be, you will be, you will, you will be, you will be, you will call yourself dumb for, for being foolish all along, biting your tongue and killing yourself for nothing. Elijah was praying, was, was telling his servant that the, 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 the servant of Elijah was complaining of the enemy that is coming to chop off their head. And Elijah was saying, relax yourself for those that are with us are more than they that you see there now. And the boy still couldn't get it until the Lord had to open the boy. And imagine if, if Elijah did not ask the Lord, remember Elijah already saw and he was busy doing what he's doing. Why the army is raging a white horse everywhere with flaming sword. They're coming to chop off your head. But he sat down and was doing something different. The, 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 the servant almost, almost uh, uh, pissed up himself until Elijah asked the Lord to open his eyes to see. This is what do happen in the kingdom of God. You got to desire it for God to reveal it to you. You have to pay the price. What is the price? First of all, you have to trust God. Absolutely. Don't depend on man. Give it to God. 
and allow him to direct your path. When the enemy is raging, thunder and brimstone against you, for God in his mercy will open your eyes to see their end before even the whole thing starts. And sometimes he will show you what is about to happen and he will reveal to you why it's going to happen that way. And give you a peep of what will be the end of it so that you can hold your peace together. I want us to know that the bottom line is that we should learn to call him from the depth of our heart. Not just talking because you want to talk. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So even this particular situation goes even into a nation. If a nation is confused, they need to learn to call on the Lord. It's in the book of Chronicles. Save my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. I will push up in their case. So what I'm saying in effect, I'm going to stop here today. What I'm saying in effect is this. For you to walk close with God, for you to have this close walk with God, the bottom line is that your flesh must go under. I want to give you the nugget you take home. You see flesh? It has to go under. Any which way you do it, do it. Your flesh has to go under. Your flesh is the one that is trying to show you what is happening right now and trying to elaborate it and make you feel like you are dying. You have to let that go. Your flesh is what will make you pull away from the protective arm of God and begin to try to fix things yourself. Your flesh will make you do that. Your flesh is what will make you feel like you have to go to such and such person for you to get answers to certain things in your life. Your flesh will make you do that. And that's why some people will, will live their life borrowing, borrowing, always borrowing. Every little thing, they want to go to bank to borrow. They want to go to their uncle to borrow. They want to go to their nephew to borrow. So at the end of the day, you are jungled up around. In that job God gave to you, Present everything that is going on there and ask God to make a way where there seems to be no way for you. Ask God to cause people to favor you. Because this is the way it works. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter who that person is. If God, who I know that has the heart of the king in his hand, is on your side, he will turn their heart to favor you. You will have that favor in that job. So instead of you to be indebted to anyone, you will find God working for you on the ground and you will only be there enjoying the result. And anyone who bless you will like to bless you again. Why? Because God will open doors for them. Praise the Lord. God will open doors for them. And God will have them on a high on, 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 his, on, his, on his agenda. Anything that God is doing, God will include them. And anyone who attacks them is like someone attacking God. And when you attack God, you are bound to fail. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So this is what I want you to take into account. We're going to pray. We're going to uh, continue our communion. And we're going to pray. Then we'll be out. But I want you to trust God. And uh, trust God in everything you do. And as long as you want to walk with him closely, your flesh must go under. You have to silence your flesh so that you can begin to bubble up in the spirit. Because God that you're looking for is in the spirit. And if you want to worship him, if you want to get his attention, you have to go where he is to get his attention in the spirit realm. He has no business with the flesh. No man can glory in the presence of God in the flesh. You can be in the flesh and glory in the with flesh. You cannot glory in the presence of God. Amen? Amen? Rise up on your feet and begin to bless his name. Begin to bless his name. Begin to give him praise. Begin to exalt his name. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him.